Today I want to talk to you about Gligan GUI, a very simple but intuitive UI that was recently created by a user on Reddit for their own personal use, but was kind enough to share it with all of us. Gligan itself is not something new in the stable diffusion space, but has definitely flown under the radar. What this does is gives you the ability to create bounding boxes that each have their own weighted text prompt. This way you have better control of what you want in a picture and where. And with that, let's get started. First thing to know is the requirements. This will need Comfy UI installed and running in the background at the same time. So that will need to be done first before anything. I won't go through that install here as there are plenty of videos out there covering it. You don't need to be familiar with Comfy UI to use this. It just needs to be installed and running in the background. The other important thing to note is this doesn't work with SDXL. We will be sticking with SD 1.5 models. So assuming you have Comfy and all its dependencies installed and running, let's go to the GitHub page and click on this link. And on this page, click the download button and put it into your Comfy UI models Glygon folder. This is the Glygon model needed for this to work. Luckily, it is fairly small. The next thing we need to do is install Flask. You can type CMD in your path bar and File Explorer to open up command prompt and type in pip install flask. Then once that's done, we need to clone this repository. Uh, select the text and then copy it. And then we need to uh, find a location for the files. This can be anywhere you like. I'm going to put it into this projects folder. Now go back or reopen the command window and paste the git clone link we just copied. Then let's go into that directory. And here we want to create a new text document. And then edit it. Then go back to the GitHub page and copy this line here. Then paste into our text file. We also uh, want to copy this here and add it on top of our first line. Then add the word start in front here. And then paste the line. We also need to change the single quotes here in the code to double quotes, otherwise it won't load correctly. Once everything is done, we can save and close. Then go back to where the file is located. And then rename this file from a text document to a run.bat file. Now you need to be able to see and edit the file extensions here, which for some isn't on by default in Windows. If that's the case, come up here to view, then show, and make sure file name extensions is checked. If done right, this should be a batch file now. If you haven't yet, open and run Comfy UI. And once that is open, start your new run bat file. Once open, it should look something like this. If it's different, the developer might have made improvements since recording this. To get started, simply draw a box then a new text prompt box will pop up and you can type something simple here. And then once done, hit Q prompt. In the background, Comfy UI will do its work, but you won't see anything happening in the main window, just the command prompt. And if everything is working, you should get a result. And we can keep adding boxes and prompts, uh, creating different clothing uh, and details to our scene. The bounding boxes do bleed a bit into each other but it has to in order to create something coherent. This is a great way to have more control over the scene and quickly change out items and get several compositions fast. Now let's go over the UI. From the top, we have the Q prompt button. Don't worry about the post button for now. The green line here is our progress bar. And here is where we have our bounding box prompts for each box. And this is the pixel coordinates of the box the box size, a delete button, and the box visibility button. Here we can show all or hide all the bounding boxes or delete all if you want to start from scratch. Down below here is going to be our overall positive and negative prompts. These apply to the entire image. This is a good place for your general positive negative prompts or if you want to apply something to the entire image. You can also use embeddings if you wish. Then here is the main image. We can right click and copy the image or the composite. The image is without the boxes and composite is with 
we can download the image here where we want, but all the generations already save themselves to an output folder. That can be located in your ComfyUI output Glegan folder. And you can find all of your previous generations here. There is also set canvas backdrop. Not sure entirely what this is for other than perhaps loading in an image and using it as a reference to line up your composition. I'm probably missing something on this one, but for now we'll move on. We also have image dimensions. I would suggest sticking with 512 by 512 as the morphing, cloning, and box bleeding gets worse the higher you go, but the option is there. Here is our checkpoint list. It will obviously use your ComfyUI model folder, which can easily be pointed at your other folders through the extra model paths file. Just edit with notepad and change the paths as needed. As you can see, this is pointed at my automatic 1111 folder. Then we have our sampling settings. This is what I'm using for realistic vision, but you can change these to anything you like for whatever checkpoint you are using. If not sure, check out the Civit AI website. Every model usually has a default settings list somewhere on its download page. Here we can change the seed to random or lock it. And uh, last, we can even add a LoRa if you wish. But so far, they have been real glitchy for me and sometimes don't work at all. You might have better luck. But that is the basics of this neat little program. I still have only just started using it, but I would say it benefits from using short text prompts in each box. Too long, and it starts bleeding into others. We can try to get two different people walking together in a scene. Having the boxes overlap helps for this. Having these prompts too descriptive makes one overtake the other, and then you will have two of the same people. And you can see adding something on one seems to jump over to both of them. So unfortunately, it might not work well for trying to create two unique people in the same scene. But there are definitely strengths in this when you are trying to compose a specific background scene. Something you might have trouble expressing in a long text prompt can easily be proportioned out box by box till you get what you want. It's a nice way to set up a scene and then easily change out items or just keep rolling through the new generations till you get something you like. And we aren't limited to close-ups either. You just need to think like a wide shot and we can get a nice zoomed out photo of scenery and then easily put in objects, animals, people, or whatever, and replace them on the fly. But that is the Gligan GUI. I've only scratched the surface with this. I think it will become a nice additional tool to have. While this might be seen as things we can already do in other formats, the simple UI is attractive for those out there who just want to create without an initial complicated setup. And uh, that's it for this video. I hope you found this helpful, and I will see you all in the next one.